Hello, how is everyone doing? It is the 10th of May. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I will acknowledge this day. A parent's Day, People Day, Real Days, yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, my mom has been um, gone since the 80s. Um, I love my mother very much. She was very much an inspiration to me. But honestly, uh, our relationship was slightly difficult because my mom um, had a lot of health issues. Um, she had a brain hemorrhage and, lo and lost her hearing. <laughs> you know, she was a musician and she went deaf um, when I was maybe like one or two. It was controversial because for the longest time, um, People around her who knew her and stuff didn't believe her. They thought she was pretending and had gone nuts. And um, this uh, colored my childhood completely. We were too poor to afford hearing aids, so she learned to lip read, um, refused to learn sign language, and she got very good at lip reading. I know for a fact that my mom was deaf. You know, as a little kid, you... In, in some of our evil moments, it's like, I'm going I'm to find out, you know. My mom was deaf. She was an amazing woman. Uh, she um, was one of the first black women to attend a music conservatory here in America. Either Oberlin or Ohio. I get that mixed up. Both of my parents went to music conservatory. My mom also performed... Uh, did a solo or a duet with Marian Anderson. Some of you folks know your history, know who she is. And so um, I picked up music through, from both of my parents and um, just wanted just to acknowledge Mother's Day and Happy Mother's Day. I want to talk about this record. I'm going to review it, although it, he didn't send it to me to re be reviewed. Column with William Parker and Nels Klein, Gowana Sessions 2. As I've been saying, I um, got to meet Talum and his partner um, at the Lincoln Calling Music Festival last year, and we both played the avant-garde uh, portion of the um, music festival. And I just really liked his playing, but I also liked him and his um, his spirit. And so we've become friends. I, you know, I consider him a friend. I tried to, um, my camera's, my screen is messing up. That's why I keep doing this. I'm just going to have to ignore it. I attempted to buy this. Um, I was really excited about this because I have the, um, I have another one of his records, the, with the, the, um, the trio. And when I went to buy it, he said, you know, let me just send it to you. So I, I, I don't think that he's expecting a review. He just wanted me to have it. My glasses are groupy. I know they are. But I've been listening to this, and I've listened to this already um, a few times to try and give um, some, some good, some honest feedback about this. Tolan plays keyboards, piano particularly. And he really does have a style and some interesting technique. Um, Open-minded individual, and it really comes through in this playing. This is two improvisations, life in the world and world in a life. And this is really living, breathing uh, improvisation. I've listened to it several times. Solemn's um, approach to the piano at times reminds me a little bit of Cecil Taylor. He doesn't sound like him, but there is a... His approach, like I said, it's very organic and rising and falling, and at times it becomes really rather percussive. And... Um, percussive, and it's like there's a particular... I hear a particular scale or modal mode that comes in on this one, not everything. He doesn't repeat himself. 
that's what brought Cecil Taylor to mind. I really like the way that these folks intertwine. Nels Klein's guitar playing is is really revelatory because there's so many times when you have to ask yourself, well, what am I listening to? It could be electronics. Um, it could be some kind of effect, but it, in fact, it's it's Nels playing the, the guitar with effects, but but what we're hearing is him playing the guitar. There's a lot of simpatico between these people. Um, they're listening, but they're also um, respecting what's happening inside of them. And so there's points where the music, it's moving along, it's music, and it's, it's growing, and then all of a sudden it happens. I noticed it particularly on side two, where it just all of a sudden it just lights up like, like you have a, a fire, and then it sparks up and it flames up. And then, then it's really intense. And what's beautiful is that something happens and then it's happening. And they're going with it and they're playing it. And it's like, then it gets to a point and it's like, and I can feel it. It's like, what next? And it's beautiful because it sounds like they trust the music and they let it, it never falls apart. It disintegrates into the next phase how's that pretty fantastic really um highly engaging and this is well worthy of deep listening another thing that i think is way cool is this album is on the esp disc label um to me it's just a really wonderful label i don't know who owns it now or who reactivated it but this music definitely belongs on that esteemed label. I think it's esteemed. The whole thing about ESP Disc was that the artist alone decides what goes on the record. And um, they needed, they, we need labels, people who are willing to risk this so that we get a chance to experience stuff like this. Thalem, thank you so much for sending this to me. I will review the other one eventually. I have noticed though of the two albums, this one really strikes the chord deeply right away. And the other one, I'll have to explore more. Before I go, I'll talk about a couple other records that I've played in the last few days. Uh, I will say these last few days have been rather interesting. It's like we're, in my experience of this COVID-19 uh, mess, we're entering a new part, a new phase of it where the hard reality is really setting in that this isn't we can't bullshit our way out of this it's really setting in uh, around around me and our, my neighborhood and the world and um this is interesting times Whew. things could could go either way couldn't they I love documentaries, and I recently watched a documentary about Hank Marvin and the Shadows. And I do have the Marvin Welton Farrar. Um, I have the Second Opinion, and I have a compilation of, that has most of their first album after they broke up the Shadows and tried to go on in music. Interestingly, these guys, as the Shadows, were instrumental, and then they start this and go vocal. Now they're vocally, um, they have great harmonies, and there's some good songs on here, but I'll tell you what, these lyrics are just about as dumb as they come on a lot of these songs. There's a song, I, I, you know, it's probably just for um, entertainment sake, but there's a solo song on here about the lonesome mole, and just some of these songs are so silly the words it's like oh my god these words are just it's not like I don't have a sense of humor it's just like these words are just so horrible compared to the music there's a couple songs on here thank heavens I've got you beautiful song beautiful song really enjoyed that a couple days ago I pulled this and played I've talked about mountain but I pulled this and played this all the way through uh, one of my favorite songs is on here. It's not one of the rockers. It's the, it's the quiet song, The Laird. 
That was the B-side of the Mississippi Queen single, which I had as a, as a kid. And they ended up, when I turned it over, I was enchanted. It's a beautiful song. I don't know what it's about. I don't... It just, still, it's one of my favorite quiet songs. I love quiet, pretty songs. Probably more than anything. Probably more than hard punk or really jazzy, explosive fusion, which I love. I love energy. But I really do like the soft, quiet moments the best. I really do. Really enjoyed this, yes, last night, The Men in Black, Gospel According to the Men in Black. This is a goofy record by the Stranglers. It's loosely referring to UFOs, but it's tongue-in-cheek, too, at the same time. So the words keep popping out while I listen to it, and, it, and it's kind of funny. But the music is way cool, and Dave Greenfield's keyboards were so important to their sound. So defining of their sound. I don't know if I've shown this yet, but here's another record that during the lockdown I um, ordered and got in. It's something I'd been wanting. 69 is the name of the band. It's two people from um, Germany, from Dusseldorf. Circle of the Crayfish. This is an um, organ drums duo, very much like Lee Michaels with Frosty, Harden and York, Hanson and Carlson. Um, sounds a bit like the Nice, but it's it's heavy and organy and dirty. Uh, the way it starts, really good. Then they go into these areas where they're trying stuff, and the vocals. I really, again, I'm pretty harsh on vocals. The whole vocals on here are really pretty bad for my taste. Really glad I got this it's a reissue but um 1969 is when the band formed and the end of the 60s was explosive the 60s were explosive glad i lived through them but 67 68 69 going into the 70s was was revolution um when it comes to music and popular culture things were had changed and the changes were being absorbed. Uh, it was a heavy time. I'm glad I lived through it. Finn Forrest, I, I think someone gave this to me um, through the vital community. I think possibly Eddie Perez. I have their first album, original. Used to have this original. Why did I sell it? I know you guys are probably laughing at me now. <laughs> I don't know why I sold that album, but thankfully, um, I was sent this lovely green vinyl. Isn't that beautiful? Jazz Rock from Finland. Really good. Must be something in the water up there in Finland. I don't know how welcome I would be in those Scandinavian countries, but I'm intrigued by them and, and still would want to visit them. I felt very comfortable when I went to Denmark. And uh, when I went to Holland as well, I felt very comfortable in those countries. I liked them. I like this music. I like, I think I like the people. <laughs> I like people. This one came up from seeing a post online and I'd forgotten how incredibly ahead of the time the fugs were, the fugs, virgin fugs. Speaking of ESP, this is an original ESP disc record released in 1967 as it says for adult minds only this is incredible what they're talking about you know the they get they get dirty on here talking about a coca-cola douche but then the thing that the, the one that's just right on time here is cia man my god they just nailed it they, it was so obvious back then the manipulation by what we call the deep state, basically whoever has the power and the money, you know, and how everything is manipulated and we're lied to constantly and the world is gone to hell in a handbasket as a result of this. They're talking about this in the 60s. Here we are 2020 and the world is a fucking mess and we can't get it to cal calm down and we can't get these greedy, monstrous people who are in charge 
to wake up and become human. It's sad. But uh, I listened to that. Speaking of the French, here's a, a, a kind of a hard to find French space rock album, NYL. It includes members of Magma, Amazon, some other bands I forget right offhand. I've had this forever. And it's just, it makes you think of um, the days when people would go to the discotheque with their go go boots and freak out, you know, and it was groovy, baby. That's what this sounds like, but in a really authentic way, really good, really cool, you know, NYL. And I'll stop with this one. I have a bunch of Paul Horn records because, like I say, new age music here in Nebraska, um, people are so trendy. And so people will buy things because of trends and never connect with them. So all the Wyndham Hill records and associated labels, uh, local record shops here ended up chuck full of those over the uh, decades because people really didn't, they never listened to the records. Paul Horn is one of those artists um, associated with New Age and kind of what I call safe white music. That's not a diss, that's just a reality, you know, of how things get made and become popular uh, in America. It's safe for white people. But this album is Paul Horn, Jupiter 8 with synthesizer player Ralph Dick. And I had not ever listened to it after buying it. I probably got this, I think I got this for a quarter. And this is one of those albums where there's a lot of schlock on here, you know, where they play it real safe because they want, you know, for whatever reason. And then there will be the standouts where it's, oh, wow, this is beautiful. This is real. So Paul Horn is just someone, if you see his records cheaply, take a chance. There will be real music on any of them. Real music. Happy Mother's Day. Continue to speak to me. Let me know how you're doing. I will share one negative. Yesterday, I on Facebook, I left one of the music group, private music groups because of some immature, insulting comments I got from people who don't know me. I had um, posted a picture of me holding up the Little Richard single. I was holding it, but not by the edges. I was just holding it. So a couple folks just decided they, to attack me, you know. You never hold the record except by the edges. And then I just shot back and said, so what is this shit, you know? And then someone else wrote and said, you're, you're, you're uh, bogus. You're a bogus record collector. Now, I know who I am, so I know that's not true. But the behavior and the fact that I was dealing with it, and these are supposed to be adults, pissed me off. So I deleted the picture and then I left the group, mainly because of the behavior. It's like, I know who I am. And if, 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 if I could be in the room with a person attempting to act like this towards me, I'd punch them. I'd punch the fucking shit out of the motherfucker. It's, it's so disrespectful and it's immature and bullshit, you know? It's like, you know, you see me holding a record and here's the reason why it really pissed me off. It's like, you guys, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Have you ever been a DJ? Have you ever seen a DJ work records? Records that they love? You gotta handle those some bitches. you know what I'm saying? To get on the turntable. So, it really pissed me off. I left the group 45 Spin the Black Circle, what, you know, that's the name of the group, I left it. Um, if any of you happen to watch this, you know, you owe me an apology, you immature sons of bitches. What the fuck is that shit? Yeah, if we were in a room together, I'd get pissed and kick your asses. See, I'm fine now, I let it off my chest. But notice how I, I told you what it was. It wasn't because they insulted me. It was their behavior. It's like, I, I got to deal with this? How old are these people? You feel me, people? Talk to me. Let me know how you're doing.